I recently took a trip uh, back home to New Hampshire uh, to install one of my pieces and a lot of the people that kind of helped me grow up as a young person in New Hampshire ended up coming to the talk. And it really made me think about what is it in one's life that helps someone I guess have the courage to decide to just make all these wild creatures and monsters and robots and and I thought you know it's love and wonder vision is the people who loved you enough to teach you that your creative ideas are important and that you have something valuable to share with the world and they're the people who help you in those challenging times uh, to put on your wonder vision glasses and to see the challenges in life as actually opportunities and that we are capable of finding solutions or being brave enough to ask for help to find those solutions. And just as I have found that in my own personal life, uh, the installation that you see is uh, based on the consequence of a bunch of paintings I had done of these epic battles that had happened in outer space within my imaginary world called the Cosmic Womb. Um, these intergalactic battles also caused families to be separated from one another. And so I felt it was my responsibility as the artist creating this paracosm to find a way for these families to reunite with one another. And so I came up with this whole story about a magic flying bed that soars on a super highway of dreams and it was able to connect searching children with their lost parents and I had been reading about uh, kind of safe havens uh, places for immigrant communities to reunite with one another and I thought what if we could create something like that within the art space and what if it even went into a meta reality where the queen of my imaginary world Queen Keok contacted me and said can you make us a sanctuary city and I was like well I can't really make a sanctuary city and she's like well what can you do well we could make a reunion center in the art space how's that sound she's like all right well that's good well We'll, we'll send you the portal and we'll get the bed ready to come visit. And so I just thought it was so wonderful, this idea that the piece could continue to grow and travel and it would connect to the narrative that every time it grows bigger, it means more characters are finding their parents or more parents are finding their children. I think the portal, maybe on a subconscious level, was my version of the Toontown Tunnel. But instead of us going into their world, they're coming to our world. Just the same as Who Framed Roger Rabbit is a, a fun animated film that kids can enjoy. As you get older you start to realize it's about segregation, it's about gentrification, injustice, and so I hope that the, the same model of paracosm that they have there where it's an ability for one to talk about very complex and hard ideas um, this one also is talking about what happens when families are separated and what happens when they come together or if they can't find each other, such as Spectra Force 5, that whole group of characters, these children, the planets were destroyed, they couldn't find their parents and so they found a solution for themselves and created their own family. I think that those are, you know, kind of difficult conversations that people go through in their own lives, finding their own found family. But just as the same that like this film that I grew up with, I grew into understanding different parts of it and I hope that people who come see this show as a child, they can get lost in the wonder and maybe as an older person, they may start to see some of the other uh, more complex concepts and ideas that the work is also embodying. One of the things that I was asking myself was, well, now that you've made puppets, is a puppet a sculpture? Or what would a sculpture even look like, like if it was a Ju Young Che sculpture? And how would it differentiate itself from a puppet? And it was kind of a strange, silly question, but it was, I think, a rather important one to figure out, well, what is that differentiation? And so I started to experiment. Luckily, I, I received an Artadia grant and so I was able to use the funds for anything that I wanted research-wise and for resources. And I thought I would go back and see the first installations that I'd ever seen, which were uh, going to Disney World when I was eight. And so I went back to Disney World and I went on the special behind the scenes tour at Epcot and took notes and learned as much as I could about their materials. I went on the It's a Small World ride at least three times in a row. I think that they thought I was a spy for Six Flags, uh, just drawing and sketching out and trying to remember what it was about that experience uh, that, that changed my life. And it was 
the Peter Pan ride because it glitched and we all got stuck. And, and we were flying over, uh, I think it was like Big Ben, and we were flying over London. And I remember I was so scared because I thought we were so high up in the sky. And then my eyes started to adjust to the light. And I realized, oh, we're only a few feet off the ground. And I thought, isn't this amazing that art can make me feel this way? And I thought about all the people who were creating these pieces. And I thought, oh, these people got to grow up and keep making art and be creative as adults. So by taking the installation aspect from what I learned from going back to Disney World, taking what I had already learned from sewing and creating my puppets, and then taking eighth grade shop education and a lot of YouTube videos, I was able to problem solving and start to create these larger than life sculptures. So the process of building them, it's usually a wooden armature. And then I cut strips of quilt batting and then I wrap them kind of like a spider would, you know, wrap a fly. So, or, or mummify them basically adding pieces of a, uh, I'll get some body pillows uh, and pull out the quilt batting or the, the stuffing inside, stuff it in and create a shape. It's almost like making a, a snow person, you know, <laughs> you're just like this big white wrapped up thing. And then uh, I take fleece, not felt. A lot of times people think I work with felt. Felt uh, I use for faces and eyes and other stiff parts, but fleece, which is what most puppets are made out of, it has a stretchiness to it. Um, and so you're able to piece all of it by hand and I use a tagging gun, the kind that you would use to tag prices um, onto tags for shirts, uh, to piece everything together and then usually it's sewn with something that is an adjusted version of the Henson stitch. It's an invisible stitch that the Jim Henson company would use to make say like Sesame Street puppets um, and so the stitch is virtually invisible. I'll hand stitch it, I'll, I used to teach my neighbors how to hand stitch it and give them pizza to come help me. Um, and I have been really blessed by meeting all these uh, incredibly talented high schoolers and, and interns from colleges and even just people who have seen my work and asked if they can come by and volunteer. And I'll teach them everything I can that's useful so they can hopefully go home and make their own things and they'll hang out and come stitch with me. And another big part of it was just I wanted to see what it would feel like to stand in the presence of the characters that I have been imagining at their actual size. And how would experiencing, say, Lady Madness, the, the great dictatress of Volcano Island, who I always picture to be at least like eight feet tall, you know, um, to actually see her at that size. And it was so funny because, you know, she kind of embodied this, this larger than life bully, cartoonish bully. But every time I had to move her, I had to hug her to move her. And so these kind of symbolic creatures that rep represented these, these kind of difficult emotions, I ended up having to take care of them. They were kind of defenseless. And it was my responsibility to move them and, and to embrace them to be able to move them. And each time we pull each part out and put it together, we're also seeing all the memories of all these different characters' narratives and also all the volunteers that come and help in my studio. Uh, it helps remind me of all these wonderful people who have come and helped sew a little bit here and there, uh, given their input, made a flower, you know, sewed a seam on the bed. Um, because when we bring them back out, we can return to those special times.